Okay, this is Kenny Lee, and let's talk about masses on ramps. So in this case, we have got a block 10 kilograms on a ramp that's got an angle 20 degrees. And it says the frictional force between the block and the ramp is negligible, so essentially no friction. And we want to know the acceleration of block down the ramp. Now the thing is, if we just dropped it, the acceleration would be 9.8. But the problem is, we're not dropping it, it's sliding down a ramp. But gravity still is what's causing it to move. So we have a force due to gravity on it. And if we draw the free body diagram, we have gravity acting down. We have the normal force perpendicular to the surface. And that's essentially it. So this is no friction. Well, that's the free body diagram, but that doesn't completely help us. What we need to do is figure out how much of this force from gravity is actually moving it down the ramp and how much is actually sticking into the table. So we're going to draw a similar triangle like this one where that's the force, I'm going to call that force perpendicular, a little symbol for perpendicular. And this is the force parallel, not force 11, force parallel. And the weird thing is, if we draw our triangle like this, then we get a similar triangle. This angle and this angle are the same. And so we can figure out the force parallel will be equal to doing some trig, the weight of the object times the sine of the angle. And so weight is mass times gravity, sine of theta. So we got 10 times 9.8 times the sine of 20 degrees. And so when we do that, we get a force of 33.52 newtons. Is the force is actually taking that block down the ramp. And since there's no friction, all we have to do to finish up the problem is use that force that's making it go down the ramp and the mass, and we can figure out the acceleration down the ramp. So F net equals MA. In this case, the net force is just that. Mass was 10, and we can solve for the acceleration. So the acceleration is going to be 3.35 meters per second squared. One quick check is on these ramp problems, you should never get an acceleration to, uh, down the ramp greater than 9.8. 9.8 will be just it falling down next to a wall. So it always should be less than 9.8. And this one is, so, so far so good. Let's add in some friction here. So we've got a block on the ramp. It's released from rest. Mass is six kilograms. Angle 30 degrees to the horizontal. And we want to figure out the coefficient of friction. So we want to find mu in this case. All right, so again, we're gonna start off by drawing that similar triangle. And this is where a lot of people make mistakes. Always make sure you draw one perpendicular to the surface and then finish your triangle off. Now the free body diagram for this one will be gravity acting down, the normal force acting perpendicular to the surface, and there should be some friction in this case. And this object is actually stationary. It doesn't move. So in that case, we're looking for the coefficient of static friction rather than kinetic friction. Kinetic friction will be sliding. Static friction will be in place. And so we're going to start off by finding those components again. So force parallel would be weight times the sine of theta. So mg sine theta. So mass is 6, gravity is 9.8, sine of 30 degrees. 
So 6 times 9.8 times 30 sine gives me 29.4 newtons. The force parallel, force perpendicular. We're going to do the same thing except cosine. So 6 times 9.8 times the cosine of 30 degrees. So 30 cosine times 6 times 9.8 gives me 50.92 newtons. Right, we got those two pieces done, so that's handy. Now we gotta think about this for a second. So it's sliding down the ramp. Oh no, it's not sliding, it's being held in place. So that means the force parallel that we've got here has to equal the force of friction here. Because all these components have to cancel each other out. So the normal force is equal to the force perpendicular. If he had drawn it in, like I said, don't mess with your free body diagrams, but if we draw that in, we get the force perpendicular here and a force parallel there. So this has to match up to that, and that matches up to that. So we know force normal is equal to the force perpendicular, and the force parallel is got to be equal to the force of friction. So now we know those things, we can do the next part. Because we know the force of friction is equal to mu times the normal force. Well, that's equal to the force perpendicular. So the force of friction is equal to mu times the force perpendicular, which is 50.92. Force parallel is equal to the force of friction. A well, force parallel is 29.4. And the force of friction, we can substitute that in. So mu, or 50.92 mu. And then just divide. So 29.4 divided by 50.92 gives me a coefficient of friction of 0.58, let's say. Now there's a neat little trick about this one. You shouldn't use for things like AP exams and such, but there is a trick that if you saw this whole thing out symbolically, it's inter interesting to see what mu actually turns out to be. So that's a good practice one. And that only works for uh, something with, that has uh, no acceleration. So if it's stationary or sliding down at a constant speed. So we're going to look at one of those problems next. Okay, so on this one, we have got the same setup. We've got a 6 carry on block, 30 degrees, traveling at constant speed, so there's no acceleration. So we're going to make our triangle again. parallel make our free body diagram so we have gravity acting down the normal force perpendicular to the surface we still have friction so it looks the same as the last one because it still has the same forces the other one was stationary this one's sliding down at constant speed but the acceleration is still zero so it's still going to look the same way. Even if it wasn't, even if it was accelerating, the, the free body diagram is going to look the same. So let's find the pieces again. So force parallel equals Fg sine of theta. Because again, because of similar triangles, that angle is going to be the same as that one. So it's going to be Mg sine of theta. So... 6 times 9.8 times the sine of 30 degrees. 30 sine times 9.8 times 6. 29.4 newtons. Force 
perpendicular Fg cosine of theta. So Mg cosine of theta. Mass is 6. Gravity is 9.8. Cosine of 30 degrees. Gives me a force perpendicular. 30 cosine times 0.8 times 6 equals 50.92. Same with the last problem. Exact same answers for the last one because it's the same block, same angle, same thing. And likewise, if we did draw this in, so I'm going to redo that free body diagram because you don't want to mess up with your original one. But if I put in this component triangle that we have here, then we can see these two have to equal each other and this one and that one have to equal each other. So we still have where the force parallel has got to be equal to the force of friction and the force perpendicular is going to be equal to the normal force. So let's go ahead and take care of the normal force. So the normal force is going to be less than or equal to actually I was getting ahead of myself. The normal force is going to be equal to the force perpendicular. So that's going to be equal to 50.92. Now let's do the, the other thing. So force of friction is going to be mu times the normal force. So that's going to be mu times the 50.92. So we got that in our pocket. We're going to use that later. Since there's no acceleration, let me write it like this. MA equals the sum of the forces. Well, A is zero. And so we have the force parallel going down minus the force of friction going up. So move those over, we get force parallel equals the force of friction which we already decided over here. I'm just writing out how we can do it. So force parallel is 29.4. Force of friction would be mu times the 50.92 divide 29.4 divided by 50.92. In this case, we get mu to be 0.58 just like last time. But last time, since it was stationary, that would be the coefficient of static friction. This time, we're finding the coefficient of kinetic friction because it is moving, it's sliding against each other. Let's do one where there's an acceleration. Okay. So, nine kilogram blocks, so we change the block and the angle. This time it's released from rest, but there is an acceleration, and we got a coefficient of kinetic friction to be 0.2 between the block and the ramp. So again, I'm going to make that component triangle. Free body diagram is still going to look like all the others. We still have a normal force going this way. And friction going back up along the ramp, because friction always opposes the motion of the object. We're still going to do the same component. So force parallel equals weight times the sine of the angle. Mg sine theta. So mass is 9. Gravity is 9.8 sine of 40 degrees in this case. So 40 sine times 9.8 times 
times 9 equals 56 point, let's call it 7 newtons. Force perpendicular will be the weight component that's going into the table, so that's going to be cosine. So mg cosine of theta. So 9 times 9.8 cosine of 40 degrees 40 cosine times 9.8 is 9 67 point 57 newtons now we can still say the force perpendicular is equal to the normal force but now, since it is an acceleration, we can't say that the force parallel is equal to the force of friction because that would mean it's either stationary or moving at constant speed. It is accelerating, so we know the force parallel has got to be greater than the force of friction. And we'll handle that a little bit later. Let's first take care of this. So we know that this is going to be 67.57 newtons because we just figured it out there. So the force of friction will be mu times the normal force. So plug those in. 67.57 mu. Again, this one is kinetic. Now go to this. MA equals the sum of the forces. That's effect that's causing it to move. That's affecting its motion. So in this case, it's to be MA equals the force parallel minus the force of friction. So let's start putting in numbers now. We got mass is 9. We're looking for acceleration. Oh, we're looking for acceleration. So we can actually do that part. We actually have it because it says right there that the coefficient is 0 0.2. So that's 67.57 times 0.2. Let's go back and calculate that. So that means the force of friction is 13.51 newtons. Oh, we have a number for that now. So that's good. We can't have two variables there. That would make it rough. Force parallel is 56.7 minus... 13.51 we just solve for acceleration so 56.7 minus 13.5 then divide by 9 we get an acceleration of 4.8 meters per second squared okay so that's how to do the blocks on ramps so good luck and uh tune in later and we'll work on some atwood machines thank you goodbye